Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Kat Anjala. Hey, pal. Jacob from Matera, who's back from his Hoo-doo. swingers retreat. I'm feeling good. Danny Dubs, how you feeling, buddy? Good to see you. Jake, how was your, uh, how does it feel uh, being inside another lady? You know, I overrated. <laughs> no, it was great. It was a good time. Um, you look lighter in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I feel lighter in the balls. I don't even think we're going to have to pixelate anything this week. <laughs> it's it's like a, a deflated birthday balloon right now. Aww. So, But a happy birthday. In balloon. a good way. Yeah, Aww. not a sad birthday. Well, it's good to have you back, Furman. We missed you. Back, I missed you guys. We had puppets here and everything, man. All hell broke loose when you left. I was devastated when I heard I missed a puppet. It was a pretty good puppet situation. Got to be honest. Yeah, Kenzel has a troubling amount of cop puppets. Yeah. You think a cop puppet has ever gotten him out of a ticket? He said it did. Did he he really? You didn't listen to the episode? I haven't yet. No. You yeah. fuck. I haven't. I'm sorry. I don't lay in bed and watch it with my Un-fucking wife. I'm fucking real. <laughs> Little Stingers yeah, is my favorite podcast. You watched it with somebody else's wife on your retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was too busy fucking Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the clip. That's not the- <laughs> you were playing the episode, but the sound of your nuts slapping a stranger's ass <laughs> over, over rang. <laughs> Them big old hairy nuts slapping, oh, slapping strange. <laughs> Just look at him, man. I can tell by the way he's carrying himself. He was gorilla pounding. I, I was. Mm. Well, you deserve it, man. You, 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 Thank you. You're a good guy, man. Thank you. You're, you're good to everybody. Appreciate that. You deserve the bus. <laughs> John, I was watching the Jokers a couple days ago. Oh, yeah? yeah. Was I. Really? Yeah. What era? I, dude, I don't know. It's been on for 30 years. What did M- Murray's hair look like? He's bald. I know, but early seasons he had, he had a wig. Had an, you know, a little bit more growth on top. All right, it wasn't. Um, I remember Sal had on Malcolm X glasses. <laughs> okay, that's that's a new era. Okay, cool. <laughs> he had a great haircut, too. Nice. All right. And yeah, uh, I was thinking of you. Was it the best possible thing to watch on TV? Of course it was. Uh, I was. I could enjoy it more if I was by myself watching it. Who are you with? I don't want to get into that, man. Whoa. The cast of Punked. <laughs> <laughs> um, some things are better enjoyed uh, when you're by yourself or in the company of friends. You were watching it with an enemy? No, not an enemy. Family. But... <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I had to spell it out for him. Did the person you were with not enjoy it to your liking? Uh, they did, man, but oh my god. Oh, it's like god. I'm pulling fucking teeth. You volunteered this information. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just trying to make small talk. <laughs> On our podcast, the people pay pay four dollars a month for. <laughs> but yeah, I watched the Jokers and it's a good show. It's a great show. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's determine whether or not you're gonna get your Jokers episode or if I'm gonna get to talk about our bad boy tonight. Wanna Feels- know how I got these scars? <laughs> I flipped the Joker coin and it ended up <laughs> in my asshole. Here we go. Fuck you. We won again. Jake, we did it. We back, bitch. Congrats, guys. <laughs> well, I have to say this. So I just want to add a disclaimer. If this is going to be our first cartel member episode. Oh, fuck, dude. All right. Actually, I did win the toss. Uh, <laughs> so if, if any cartel members are out there please know that this entire episode was written directed and um just totally paid for by jake matera no it's not yep. no so it's anything not. that comes out of our mouths or that nope. you see on screen this is a lie comes from the mind of this pervert he the, is a liar the Furminator. Nope. hasta la vista he says to the cartel <laughs> And his and just for reference, his address is four twenty sixty nine, Candy Cane Lane, Boothwin, Pennsylvania. Oh, I can't believe you wrote some of this shit, Jake. Dude, I you know, all of it. Cartel guy. Yeah. Are we gonna use his, the real name? What oh. should we call him, John? Fucking Jose Bagote, bro. <laughs> That's actually his name. <laughs> Joe Mustache. Uh. Dude, Mike, I, you've always done pranks to us. If somebody, two dudes come out and put oh, bags fuck. over our heads right now, I will shit my pants. All right, look at it this way. <laughs> I don't have a big dick. <laughs> hear me out here. No, it, let's hear him out. <laughs> if, Go on. If I were to have my dick cut off by a cartel, I would just get the one that I always wanted. After? Yeah. In the surgery, if you yeah. don't bleed out. 
I wouldn't. You think they're going to stop it? it I'm, no, I'm a good bleeder. I'm, I, I've never bled profusely. All right. Not a hemophiliac. Plus, right? I'm not drinking anymore, so. That blood's thick, baby. It clots. That blood's going to come out like fucking elderly jizz. Oh, man. <laughs> you do watch the porn to know what elderly jizz is. <laughs> Viscosity <laughs> levels are. I feel like that's the band that plays Pornhub's Banquet. <laughs> All right, you want to know this bad boy's name? You mean this fucking bad ombre? This bad ombre. <laughs> I don't really want oh, to. Come on, man. I'm scared. Well, Jake does. He's got empty balls and a, a full heart, and How? he's ready to hear some bad stuff. Is he alive or is he old? No, he's dead. All right. Passed away. Okay, so we're feel... disrespecting the dead. <laughs> yeah, cartel. Jesus Christ. And well, I will say this: loves their dead. He was he was uh, tied into a cartel. He wasn't officially a cartel member. Oh, so, so I don't think we're really speaking out of line here. Okay. So this gentleman's name is Adolfo Costanzo. Whoa, mm-hmm. doesn't sound like a Mexican to me. The who, Godfather of Matamoros. Who was his friend? Seinfeldo. Oh, Jake. There is a Seinfeld relation here. What? Yeah, he was. Um, Adolfo can't stand you. No. <laughs> well, he. Um, all right. He was also a cult leader. He ended up moving his cult to the desert. And uh, what? the place was called Rancho Santa Elena. So wow. you're not too far off. And his last name was Costanzo. Yeah. So uh, I am Elena. not yelling. <laughs> <laughs> this is a desert. <laughs> That's all I had. That's oh, I'm waiting to see what uh, other Seinfeld impressions you could do. That famous Seinfeld episode. Get off! <laughs> Jake, can you fuck a 17 year old? <laughs> no, no, I cannot. Will you? Can he? No. <laughs> Is everybody of age on that swingers cruise? Uh, yes, I believe uh, so. So. All right. All right. Let's say uh, let's not play with that one. So, so we got Latin bad boy on our hands. This is uh, okay. I still don't feel that comfortable, but if he's dead. He's dead. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put um, Danny. my address on the internet. Yeah. Why don't you just put the dunce cap over your entire face <laughs> and we'll go from there. He put the dunce cap. <laughs> hey, who was that? I was still. Uh, Uncle I, Leo. I think that was Andy Kaufman as. Uh, what's the guy's name? He dressed us up as. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, it doesn't matter. Z- Zabruda. Paul. Giamatti. Yes. In the movie. Yeah. Let's go back to All right, we're back, this baby. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adolfo Costanzo was born in Miami, Florida. Oh. Yeah. He's American. Well, he spends a lot of time in Mexico. I ain't afraid of nobody born in Florida. All right. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> that was a bad thing to say. We're about to go to Florida. <laughs> and they eat faces there. What would you do if somebody attacked you and you felt as though they're on the verge of eating your face? I'd rip their genitalia to shreds. <gasps> With what? My bare fucking hands. And my mouth if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this motherfucker was born in Miami, Florida, November 1st, 1962. All right. Now, what, he moved to Puerto Rico when he was a baby. He went from Miami to Puerto Rico, which is the loudest megabus route you could possibly take. Jake, cool it. The mega raft. (laughs) (laughs) Um, His father passes away. His mom remarries. And uh, his mother's name is Aurora, by the way. She's a uh, spicy lady. You're going to you're going to enjoy hearing what she does. But not long after they're married, uh, the second husband dies and leaves him a ton of money. Really? It's the the ideal. Stepdad left him money. Yep. Wow. I would kill to have somebody leave me some fucking money, man. Who would you kill? And for how much? I would I would cut the heads off of everybody in this house right now for five G's. Oh my god. All right. I'll give you five hundred dollars <laughs> not to. No, it's been a long time since a family member died and left me money. Two thousand one was the last time when my aunt left me five G's. You got anything on the on the line? Coming down the line soon? What do you mean? Anybody in hospice or something? No, nothing. Well, Nah, my parents. Not, are, not that you're gonna see any money from. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not what my family does. 
<laughs> die they, they die holding lottery tickets <laughs> 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 that aren't winners. <laughs> but how about you guys? You sitting on any dough? Mm-mm. Now that we're talking about dangerous people, yeah. <laughs> nope. Still, uh, still broke. All right. And everybody's healthy. <laughs> Fuck. All right. So. Uh, the second husband dies, so the mom's like, fuck this. We're going from Puerto Rico back to Miami. Okay. And they get back to Miami, and uh, one of the funny things that I found out about his mother was that she practiced Santeria. I knew that was going to be a thing when mm-hmm. the cult, when you said about a cult. Yep. Okay. And um, So what does that mean? It's like Mexican she was very in the sublime. basically. <laughs> She followed him on tour with all the money her dead husband left her. She took Bradley Knoll's death very, very badly. <laughs> uh, st- her hus- second husband left her a million dollars. She spent it all. <laughs> it's basically uh, Mexican voodoo, right? Well, all right. So I read a few different definitions, but a few, a few of the things that popped up most often were that, all right, Santeria is based in Spanish Catholicism, and it involves animal sacrifice. Whereas voodoo is based in French Catholicism. Um, I don't know about sacrifice there, but oh, there's something that she gets into and that Adolfo gets into called Palo Mayombe, which is darker shit that involves human sacrifice. Whoa. All right. But she's she's a Santeria lady. All right. One of the funny things about her is that she would have beefs with neighbors and then these neighbors would end up with decapitated animals on their doorsteps <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> that rules that's like if they blocked like your park your driveway they would just end up with a headless yeah squirrel oh sorry about your gato's cabeza <laughs> oh jake i had somebody block my driveway last week you did yeah, i wish you i wish you that? reminded me about that i left a nasty note on his window did you yeah what'd it say i said if you're gonna park in front of my house don't block my fucking driveway i can't believe they did that how long were they there? I don't know, but um, after I got home, the car was there for at least a half hour. I would have walked up and down the block, shirtless with a baseball bat, screaming at the top of my lungs until that person came out of their house. It wasn't a neighbor. So what happens is... They weren't on the block? No. There's football at the end of the street. There's kids football. Oh. So the neighborhood just overrun with these fucking dirtbags who do shit like that. Oh, I would have... Kids kicked off the side view mirror. <laughs> yeah. These scumbags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Developing their child's love of sports. But at the same time, I, I love that you said if you park in front of my house. Because, I mean, that's putting a target on your house when you do that. Brother, you want to come at me. Whew. I yes. would have left a note. I'd be like, yes. I don't know whose house you're parking in front of, <laughs> but you probably shouldn't bro- block their driveway. Seems rude. Yeah. Jake, have you, have you seen my mental state the past few months? I I'm, yeah, uh, yeah. I, honestly, I swear I'm surprised you didn't do more than just leave a note. I know, and, here, and here's why: because I came home, we we just had a nice time. We recorded an episode of Dad Meet in the afternoon. It was a lovely time. I went up to go pick up my son from his Muay Thai training. I came home. On the ride home, I decided, like, all right, I'm going to have the place all to myself. Someone's gonna be doing his thing, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay in my bedroom, just turn the lights off, and just take a little snoozini. All right. Came home, saw the guy like half of his front of his car was like in, into my driveway. You were able to get your car into the driveway. Yeah, I got in, but it yeah. was still it's, it's not something I would have done, buddy. I'm with you. I know. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I pulled in, and I was just like, "All right, how am I gonna handle this?" I'm like, "All right, I still want to take my nap." So I wrote the note, I put it on his windshield, and I went and I took my nap. <laughs> You fell asleep after that rage. It took a while. Damn. Just and even after you woke up, it was still there for another half. No, hour. it was gone. Okay. Did you see the person in the car? I did not, but I believe I know who it is because I saw either the same car or a similar one parked in a different spot a couple days later. I would have taken in that in that motherfucker's back seat with a fucking guitar string in my hands and <laughs> <laughs> choked him right to the brink, and then. Right before he died, I would have let him get that last gulp of air. Say, you better get a shorter car, you piece of shit. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, he would probably be ready for that kind of uh, aggression because he's a little Italian dude. Yeah? Yeah. What was the car? It was cream colored and it looked like not a Chrysler 300, but something similar. Okay. Yeah. 
You don't think I'll kill him? I know. But I'll kill him if he does it again. Okay. But agreed. We're going to kill the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's how I'll get my five G's. <laughs> I love the way you think, John. (laughs) Why would you get money from John? Don't ruin this for me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. If we're contract killers, I guess I'd essentially be paying myself. So fuck. I was going to say. Now I'm in the whole 2,500 for you. (laughs) Good news. The trunk is full of cocaine. (laughs) But yeah, baby, I I don't want to have my piece ruined that day. Good. Seems like you did, you did the right thing. I did, man, because I've been unhinged lately. And you could have just I did been not need that. sitting on his hood eating sunflower <sighs> seeds when he returned. <laughs> yeah. Just, shit on the windshield. Yeah. There, there's a 100% chance that would have escalated. Yeah. Could you imagine having to bail Mike out? Because he fought a Little League dad. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would be so proud. Oh. <laughs> it would be my first time going into a bail bondsman. and I, I You get me out. A big smile. Oh, with the oh, biggest smile thank on my you, man. face. Thank you. I would have ripped that guy's fucking windshield wipers off and shoved him up his goddamn ass yeah, well, for you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> all right. Y'all are all ready to learn some more about black magic? Now that the cartel knows what I'll do for taking <laughs> up, for blocking half a parking space, I think I'm ready to go on. All right. Maybe I should say something dangerous so they get off my Yeah, case. what are you going to do? Um... I'm going to cut my own dick off and shove it up my own ass. Yo, Mike is loco. You don't want to fuck with him. <laughs> He's still got half a penis left. <laughs> Living la vida loca. All right. So uh, this motherfucker starts at the age of nine, starts practicing Palo Mayombe. Which is a Santeria-esque thing. It's it's black magic. And it's uh, there's so many different terms that I came across when like trying to fucking differentiate one from the other. But with Palo Mayombe... It seems to be that, all right, you're taking elements from the earth to, like, uh, conjure, like, these uh, entities which will provide shelter and safety and protection for you. Okay. So, it's like you're making, like, you're taking parts of people, parts of animals, sticks, leaves, and fucking mud. Classic Newt's Eye Witch's Brew. Okay. Kind of shit, right? I don't know what that is. Like uh, the eye of Newt when they're making a... Is a Newt a bat? No, it's like a lizard. It's a okay. <laughs> It's a Frankenstein. That's what they're making. The Were you like this on the Swingers Cruise? Oh, man. I wore a dunce cap the entire cruise. <laughs> <laughs> on your balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check out dumb balls over there. I'm going to suck him dry. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely nude but a party hat over my neck. <laughs> oh. All right, so it seems like uh, Santeria focuses on lighter stuff, whereas Palo Mayombe is as fucking dark as it gets. Okay. All right, and that's what this motherfucker's into from At a, a child. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about him pissing the bed or <laughs> jacking off or setting fires. Like this motherfucker None is. Of that. Yeah, blame it on the goat's blood. Killing in teachers. Your bed. Yeah. Oh, this was pretty awesome, too. His mom claimed that he was psychic. Nice. Because she says that he accurately predicted the Ronald Reagan assassination attempt. Whoa. Which is a pretty cool thing that if your mom thinks you're psychic, because just imagine all the shit you can get out of when you tell her, like, all right, I could clean my room, but you're going to be paralyzed in an accident if I take the time to do that. (laughs) If I take the time. (laughs) So he accurately predicts that. And, uh, the first bit of trouble that I that I read about him getting in, which seems odd for a kid who's conjuring evil from different worlds at the age of nine, is that in uh, 1981, so he would be not a kid now, he would be an adult. Uh, he got caught stealing a chainsaw. For, and he wasn't chopping probably down, cutting down, down trees. a tree. No, yeah, probably was not cutting down a tree. <clears throat> and but why is that something you could get in trouble for? Because you're not allowed to steal, dickhead. Oh, stealing. Yeah, what did, what did you think I said? I wasn't going to steal it. Stealing. <laughs> and uh, he was a handsome man. Muy guapo. Very guapo. And he became a model, and he got a modeling job in Mexico City. Wow. And it was there that he st- that he discovered that he was also bisexual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quite the discovery. <laughs> no regular <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> That's a Benjamin Butler. <laughs> <laughs> a Franklin butt slammer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, was he like 
out? Like, was he saying he was bisexual, or was this always like a denied claim from him? Um, that's a great question, man. I I think that he had. I think it was known within his cult that he had male lovers and female lovers. Okay. It was just like a known thing, but he didn't declare it. If your cult leader is not going both ways, are you even like you're not in believing cult, yeah. that guy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's true. Believe anything that guy says. So after the, the modeling gigs up, like he's very persuasive. I've seen him described as a Mexican Manson. I like that. I do too. It's got good. It's a good band name. Yeah. <laughs> So with that said, he's able to recruit people to join him to form his own little black magic circle. And the plan is to eventually go into business in my in Mexico. Now he does go back to Miami with a few followers that he gained from Mexico. And one of these followers was a uh, gentleman named Jorge Montes, who was a gay psychic, Jake. Hmm. Gay psychics are a fucking dime a dozen in Mexico, I guess, huh? I don't know, buddy. Bring me one back the next time you go. Will do. Uh, this gentleman, Jorge Montes, was a gay psychic, and he was able to accurately predict what would happen on every season of Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Woo. Gay psychic. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> So he brings uh, his followers. He's got a few of them. He, he brings them from Mexico to Miami. Then he's like, all right, fuck this. The real money's in Mexico. So 1984, he heads from Miami back to Mexico City, and he's going into business. Now, the business that he opens revolves around performing these black magic rituals for local cartels where they would go looking for protection. And um, he gained a lot of traction pretty quickly, and he even had a menu. Because the things that were that required uh, some money were obtaining certain animals for certain sacrifices. Like the more powerful your ritual needed to be, yeah. the more important something was to you. Goat's gonna be yeah. hundred pesos. Squirrel's gonna be ten pesos. Yeah, like a shit. chicken was like fucking six bucks. Yeah, the more expensive ones were uh, zebras were over a thousand dollars. Where Yikes. the fuck are you getting a zebra from, brother? These are people linked in with cartels. They can get anything they want. And then Jesus. the highest priced animal that I saw was a giant a lion animal. cub. It was a lion cub that cost over three grand for that ritual. Ooh. Oh my god! Why did it have to be a cub? I don't know. You think? What are you going to go fucking find yourself a scar? You think that's got any power behind it? So he's using uh, he's obtaining these lion lion cubs to create these powerful rituals. So I think it would be fair to say that they had a symbiotic relationship. That'd be fair. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so his customers were drug dealers, so they would fucking fork over all this cash just to like have safe journeys and just for they they have the fucking voodoo mindset as well. They do. Like they felt as though like these rituals were necessary for transportation for large amounts of fucking drugs. Yeah. Or to make them impervious to fucking bullet wounds. Make them invisible too. That was another big one. Wow. And at this point, I mean the cartels probably Controls local police agencies, right? For the most part. But uh, the federales really cracked down on them at the end. Okay. But a big part of that is because they claim an American victim and they're being pressured by Texas government to uh, to find out what the fuck happened. Yeah. Also, Blue Streak had just come out and federales had a lot of wind at their back from that. Oh, was that uh, Nick Nolte and Martin? Whom? Nick Nolte and Martin. It was no. Tim Robbins and and Martin Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence and Luke Wilson. I'm thinking of Blue Chips. Blue Luke Chips. Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Blue Streak. Yeah, it's Tim Robbins. I'm bro. a federale. No, that's nothing to lose. Uh, <laughs> Do not ever come at me about 90s Martin Lawrence movies. <laughs> or I will fucking tear your asshole inside out. I'm pal. scared. Are you part of the cartel right now? <laughs> He's so crazy. <laughs> Look at him. I can see it in his eyes. You do not want to see me <laughs> when Gina walk in the room. <laughs> in 1985, he kicks his business up a notch because uh, the cartels are requiring more and more of his rituals. So he starts stealing bodies. 
And go ahead, Jake. Do they use the whole? Because you said earlier pieces. Mm -hmm. Is he using the whole thing or pieces? It depends what you need it for. Uh, by and large, pieces. So if you so say if you buy a thousand dollar zebra, right? Mm -hmm. But somebody else had bought a zebra, like the and they before. only needed a, a knee. Yeah. And you need the whole head. It's like, why am I paying for the whole fucking? Yeah. Can I get a zebra? Yeah. Can yeah. I get like? Can I buy the head for four hundred? Don't let the zebra fool you. This is not a black and white issue. Don't let it fool you. Yeah. It's like if a dad made a magic eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just different strokes for different folks, Jake's. And, uh, <laughs> step there, by step, day by day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a family matter. Yeah. We're moving on up. Yeah, I'm sorry if I do that. <laughs> Jake, what is wrong with me? <laughs> All right, so get this, though. He's gaining more and more steam as the years progress. So in 1985, he starts stealing bodies. And he creates this shed where he has like this. He, he gets a cauldron called an Nganja cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's truly a bruja. <laughs> he is, yeah. Is that what he calls himself? I don't know what he calls himself, but that would make... You're, you're a person who conjures shit as a bruja, That's right? like a male witch, right? A brujaria is a witch, right? <laughs> that sounds like diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like coffee-based yeah. diarrhea. Okay. Um, Cold brew. Maria. I think okay. a brujaria is a bitch. Okay. Or a witch. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like when you have to shit your pants at a Starbucks. <laughs> Dude, I just said a brujaria. Yeah, I will buy a water after. Just give me the code now. <laughs> Just take my whole fucking wallet. <laughs> Just throw in your fucking car. <laughs> but Adolfo's a real bad boy. And he's able to get local cops to join the cult. So now he has influence of the local police to shake down drug dealers. And Adolfo himself is also shaking down drug dealers. Damn, he's got the power. He did, does. Did he, he actually want the cops? Or did he? was he just trying to obtain the police dogs for a sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> no, he would. Act, he's, he's in the killing people, too. Wow. So... Do you know how many uh, bodies he ended up? Uh, 16 confirmed, likely <gasps> dozen, dozens more. Were, and was this all uh, sacrifice related? Or was he probably at some point just a cold hearted killer? I know at least at the end he was a cold hearted killer because really? when, it, when it became apparent that he wasn't going to get out of the situation that he was in, he instruct, instructed his enforcer to kill both him and the guy that was with him. Damn. Motherfucker turned. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Motherfucker it, went full Heisenberg on the ass. But he did a little death by bodyguard kind of thing? He did, yeah. Wow. He gets in this human sacrifice, and um, at this point, he forms an alliance with a local cartel called the Calzada family. They've been clients of him, his for a, for a long time. Sorry, it just sounds, Calzada sounds delicious. It does. It does. <laughs> I thought I heard your belly growl. Yeah, that was actually my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that way when you get hungry for pussy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really need to eat pussy right now. <laughs> You just start slapping themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but he forms this alliance with the Calzada family. And they've been clients of his for a while. And uh, he starts getting closer and closer with them. And in 1987, he feels as though it's the time to ask for an official partnership with them in regards to drug sales. They deny his partnership. Yeah. So on April 30th, 1987, uh, one of the leaders of the Calzado family, this gentleman by the name of Guillermo Calzado, he and six family members go missing. Whoa. Yeah. You got six of them at once? Mm hmm Real bad boy. Were they in like a car together? No. Well, they kidnapped them. And roller then. Coaster. What did you say, you motherfucker? I said roller coaster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> About a week later, uh, there's a river close by to Matamoros called the Zum Zumpanga River. And a number of the bodies are found floating in the river. And get this. Most of the bodies are missing something. Most of them are missing a combination. Yeah, <laughs> Fried their ass, dude. <laughs> 
I'm talking about fingers are missing, toes are missing, dicks are missing. What? So they all got tortured. Like for information, you're assuming? Now here's the deal. Like most people, according to somebody who was found alive at the site when it all came crashing down, said that typically victims were killed first and then mutilated. However, that wasn't always the case. Oh, because it was for sacrifice, uh, cauldron, body parts, ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But gotcha. being that this one was in uh, revenge for not allowing him to form a partnership, mm-hmm. I could picture it being it more savage than others. Time, yeah. yeah. Were they uh, any of the seven people children? I don't know. How bad did he get? Was he killing kids at the end? I don't know if he was killing kids because anybody that I've read about, um, as far as like the ones that are were higher profile or people that have wronged him, were adults. Okay. Yeah, I but think that, I think there was one little old lady mutilated late last night. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, he gets this way. Sorry, You're yeah. so bad, man. Buck, buck. <laughs> yeah, it must be a buck one. <laughs> All right, so now he doesn't have this this coalition with the Calzada family, so he forms a new alliance with the Hernandez family. Sounds familiar. But not as hungry. <laughs> Hernandez doesn't make me nearly as hungry as Calzada. <laughs> and at this point, his operation is getting large enough as to where he's like, all right, we need our own space. So they move to the desert. Uh, and they call the space Rancho Santa Elena, like I had told you earlier. Yes. You dumb fucks. <laughs> Why did he? I'm so sorry, man. Now, this is 20 miles outside of the city where they were performing this shit originally, Matamoros, which is on the E, which is, all right, it's right on the border of Texas and Mexico okay. on the uh, Gulf Coast side. Gotcha. So it's got to be close to the desert, right? That's yeah, like it a is. desert town. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people come from uh, uh, San Pedro Island in Texas and cross the border here for fucking just to raise hell to fucking buy painkillers. There's fucking doctors there that are cheap. So people go there for fucking doctor visits and fucking dentist visits. Americans sneak into Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the opposite of what's on the news. Mm hmm. Why don't they be reporting about how my toothache had to go to Juarez? Why don't they be reporting that? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you tell Sorry, me? Sorry, I took an edible last night. And <laughs> I am still fucked up off of it. <laughs> Little old lady. <laughs> all right, so he forms this alliance with the Hernandez family. They move to their own spot in the desert. And this is a very, very fucked up place. And when it finally gets raided, they describe it as, as like the area where the fucking rituals took place as being like a shed with red fucking tar paper on the inside and they said there's cigars everywhere empty bottles of liquor and they said the smell was horrific from the cigar from the (laughs) 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 yeah dude there was all kinds of fucking shit putting this cauldron to cook up to make these fucking rituals when they arrived to like fucking raid the place the description was a human brain a fucking cat oh these were all in the cauldron leaves, at the time. All in the cauldron at the same at the same time. You look, it's a Pinterest recipe if you want to look it up. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, it sounds like more of a skin trust recipe, Jake. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So in August of 1987, now remember I told you like a lot of these cartel guys are paying him to provide to do these rituals in exchange for protection, for invisibility, to make them incapable of being shot. For immunity to bullets. So in 1987, August of 1987, one of the Hernandez guys, this guy Ovidio Hernandez, and his son are kidnapped. A human sacrifice is performed to bring them back unharmed. And guess what? They're released unharmed by their captors. Whoa. Mm Mm-hmm. What a crazy thing. Could you imagine? Like, What am I being sacrificed for? Yeah. To, To save one and a half other people. That's insane. People did it for rain back in the day. Could you imagine? You're like, just wait a week. It's coming. Well, maybe not. Let's we'll chop your head off and find out. <laughs> when that happened, his stock's rising in the community. And so much so that people from the, the Hernandez cartel that he's in alliance with, they start joining his cult, including the guy that just got released unharmed. 
I mean, yeah, after that. Kind of have to, yeah. yeah. So is this all like in the name, like the sacrifice all in like the name of God? Or because you said it's black magic, right? So- well, there's different gods that they pay to or pray to. And there's one in particular, um, the goddess Oshun, which is the goddess of money and sex. I don't know about you guys, but. I could use a little bit more money and sex in my life. Am I right? I heard that, bro. Can't ever get enough of that shit. All right. Talking about the pink and the green. That's all that make me scream, (laughs) brother. (laughs) All right. Now, let's smell each other's fingers. Are you talking about pink, Barry? (laughs) Now, with that said, do you guys think we should say a prayer to Goddess Oshun? Something tells me you have one written in (laughs) cutout magazine letters. (laughs) All right, if y'all don't mind joining hands right now, we're going to say a little prayer. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. All right. Now, I this will work a thousand times better if you guys are, are speaking in tongues as I say this prayer. You got it. Goddess Oshun, we humbly bow before you to ask for all the money, power, respect, pee-pee in the pussy that we can handle. May our finances and our bonus experience growth that will shred our dungarees and our wallets. We also ask that you curse our enemies with noodle dicks and overdraft fees to such a degree that they feel compelled to Benoit their entire families. We also ask that Hibachi Sef stop harassing us in front of our wives, making them beg for shrimp with their mouths open like slut dolphins while we have to sit there and just take it like total fucking dickheads. In exchange, we offer our undying devotion to you. And as a token of our appreciation, David Schwimmer, Matt LeBlanc, <laughs> our beloved Jake Matera, <laughs> will now set his dick on fire. <laughs> Jake, please place your penis over the flame. <laughs> 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 Oh, that was the that was the, was the sacrifice. Me standing up. You gotta take it out, brother. You uh, can't, it can't go through the shorts. All right, hang on. it was soccer <laughs> style. Take a knee. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it this way. <laughs> that singed some hairs. That singed the hair. Right, now we're getting money and pussy. Was that so hard? <sighs> Thanks, Jake. Thank wow. you, dude. It does that smell like really burnt nice pubes in here. <laughs> Things I do for my boys. <laughs> uh, whoo, baby. It smells like the carpets do indeed match the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so now for some sad news. <laughs> All right, in March 1989, and this is fortunately the, where the downfall of Adolfo Costanza comes, but unfortunately, it's at a very fucked up expense. He's so, not even 30 years old. He's still a young he's man. He's not, man, yeah. So at this time, this is March of 1989, so spring break has happened, and, and I mentioned... Uh, San Padre, I think that's what it's called. San Padre Island is not too far from Matamoros, which is where where people get fucked up in San Pedro Island. They're just like, yeah, we're going to cross the border and go right in there. So they go there and they get fucked up at the bars and they get all the shit that they can't get here. So this gentleman named Mark Kilroy was one of these spring breakers. He was a University of Texas pre-med student and he came over with his boys and they were partying at a few of the different bars in Matamoros, Mexico. And they were just about to cross back over and they made it to a point where it's like the last section of vendors right before you get to the border crossing. So they were right fucking there. But he's like, I got to take a leak. So he ran off to go take a leak behind some trees. His boys waited for him. He just never came back. And that's crazy. That's just where they wait for somebody to go take a piss behind a fucking tree and you get snatched. Unfor- yeah, that's what happened there. God damn. And because what had happened what had happened was uh Adolfo realized that at this point to to take his fucking rituals to the next level, he needed a gringo. Ooh. He needed a little strange. Jake, you know that feeling, right? I don't agree with that at all. You don't think Americans that. are uh, worth more? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. Well, the people on your cruise will beg to differ. <laughs> so they kidnap 
an American guy, the, uh, Mark Kilroy, they bring him back to uh, Rancho Santa Elena and they sacrifice him. And do you have any idea if this is like torture style or is it just a simple like shoot him in the back of the head, slit his throat? It's animal style, John. Jake. You're making me hungry for another calzati. <laughs> I do know that they cut the top of his head off. Jesus <laughs> Christmas Christ. Yeah. That's some savage that, shit. That it is. is. Terrible. And they use his brain as part of this ritual in the cauldron. Fuck. What if you use the, his brain in the ritual and then all you had to do all the time was piss behind the tree? Because that was like one of the last. What? If right? you received the blessing as yeah. a result. You, every time every you time have to take behind. a piss, you have to go behind the tree. Or what happens? What do you mean what happens? That's just what you got to do. I think any time you're behind a tree, you have to take a piss would be the more logical oh, okay. punishment. Well, you never have to worry about that because you just burned your fucking dick off, pal. <laughs> I yeah. did. I, I Thank you, though, for that because now we get all the money and pussy yes, from thank Goddess you. Oceans. Yeah. I can yeah. still smell his fucking I'm a, from here. <laughs> I was one of like the marshmallow man. At the end there. <laughs> I almost blew one up for you. <laughs> Well, regardless of what John says, I would like some more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you, Jake. Come on, man. You know that. All right. So right after this, there is a massive weed sale that's going down, courtesy of the Hernandez cartel. And one of the main guys from the Hernandez cartel is this guy named Seraphine Hernandez. And he believes that the ritual that was just performed with the gringo made him invisible. So there's a checkpoint that he blows past. Uh, that the that the pl local police had set up. Do they think that works for his car too? He does. So Jesus he blows Christ. right through it, and he's like, "Fuck it! There, there's no way they're gonna see me." They start following him, and he's got to be thinking like, "All right, at some point, my invisibility's got to kick in here." <laughs> Dude, he legit thought he was Hollow Man. <laughs> so he um, he makes it back to the ranch, and there, there's uh, three other cult people there at the time. So the police round up all four of them. They realize that they're probably the ones responsible for the missing American. And at this point, he's been missing for, uh, fuck, I don't know how much time, but it's enough time as to where Texas politicians are getting involved and his family is fucking raising hell to try to find out what fucking happened to him. So they're having pressure from neighboring state of Texas to fucking find some answers for them. Sorry, I just want to ask this before I forget. Do you think his boys still got fucked up that night? I know they were already fucked up because they went to a bunch of bars and they said they all looked for him after that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't like spend the whole night looking for him. <laughs> Maybe he's by this all basketball right. game. Yeah. <laughs> Let's game plan at Senior Frogs. <laughs> yeah. There's a good chance he's at this chicken fight. No, Mike. <laughs> Maybe he's inside of, this, inside of this prostitute's asshole. Let me look for him there. <laughs> Speaking of prostitute's asshole in 1999. Yes, Jake. When, let's, where were you in all of this? <gasps> Uh, this was oh I was there a decade later. Okay, this is eighty nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, eighty nine. Okay. I was on a whole other side of Mexico. Gotcha. Okay, the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the trenches eating pussy. <laughs> 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 all right, dude. So after they round up these four coal people, they realize like, all right, these are probably the guys that have something to do with the disappearance, or we can at least get some answers. So the next day, uh a massive number of federales show up to uh, Rancho Santa Elena. And the dude who's leading the, uh, leading the charge is this federale named Juan Benitez, who's known for always wearing jeans and a Philadelphia Eagles jacket. Get the yeah, fuck no, out yeah, of here. Yeah. E <laughs> Can we start a channel on the podcast? <laughs> it's um, like, yeah, not for no more. You guys throwing fucking cats in that cauldron. Because, dude, that thing fucking stinks, dude. I might need to use my fucking second life to fucking <laughs> rejuvenate my sense of smell because it is fucked up. But, uh, yeah, you guys got to fucking any more of them Coronas back here? <laughs> the, the jacket does do that to you. Oh. It makes you speak Have you like seen a that. picture of this guy wearing his outfit? I did not, but I read it in a story about him. <laughs> so funny, dude. <laughs> I thought they were all Cowboys fans. I mean. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you mind throwing a fucking Troy Aikman jersey in that cauldron <laughs> while I piss on it? <laughs> but yeah, he was he was a guy who who got that job. It was typically a job that people would get that they would end up accepting bribes 
from local drug runners just to allow them safe passage. But he was somebody who was actually like, oh, I'm actually going to do my job. So he threw a monkey wrench into a lot of plans. So he gets there. And as they're looking around, they go into that shed where the cauldron is. Mm -hmm. And they see the fucking brain mixed in with the fucking dead cat. So they ask a guy who ends up showing up there, a local, just a, a ranch hand who was the guy that fucking dug graves. And they had yeah. their own graveyard there. They get him to fucking dig up the grave. They ask him where the gringo's buried. He shows them where it is. There's a wire sticking out of the ground. All right. The wire um, leads down to Mark Kilroy's body, but it's it's tied into his spinal column because eventually they're going to use his spine for another ritual. Oh, my God. So they want to be able to. Right. Yeah. So it's marked like, just to have him easily available. Jesus Christ. His corpse. Dude. Why not just say the brain belonged to a really smart cat? I was going to say. If it's in there with him. Just be funny to have a guy in overalls walking around with a cat mask on and be like, this is what happened when you, <laughs> when you mix a human brain with a cat fart. <laughs> <laughs> so in the cemetery, there's there's 15 corpses and Mark Hillroy is one of the 15. And he was the only um, gringo. He American was, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Was killed. That's what did him in because most of the people that they would choose as victims yeah, they were just poor locals the rest that of their lives nobody had just, resources yeah. to track them down and, and look after them. And plus the people there were, were well aware of what happens Dude. when you fuck with local cartels. Yeah, you fuck with one pre-med fucking Texas student. They're coming for you. Mm -hmm. All because he pissed behind a tree. I know. You know the places I've pissed? <laughs> That's why I, I hardly ever piss in a toilet. That's why I piss in a bottle, man. <laughs> in my bathroom, it's just a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but fucking uh, Adolfo Costanzo, he gets the fuck out of there. So he wasn't there to begin with, but then yeah. when he hears that it's been raided, he's like, all right, fuck this shit. So he's got a, a, a nice-ass place near Mexico City. He's not there, though. He knows that they're going to come looking for him there. So the authorities raid his home in Mexico City, and all they find is a smaller ritual chamber and tons and tons and tons of gay porn. Hmm. Got his ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like they don't even care about the dead guy. It's just illegal to be gay in fucking <laughs> Mexico. That'd be a great thing if you're a detective. Just frame every murder with gay porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Sanchez, can you get a little more gay porn in the top drawer over there? <laughs> yeah. You ask him what he wants to start talking, so he asks for Chick-fil-A. So you, you put the bag of Chick-fil-A on the desk, and he opens it. It's just like a DVD copy of Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What do you want to do? <laughs> so he's he's holed up in an, in an apartment in Mexico City with four of his disciples. And one of them is this woman named Sarah Aldretti, who's scared for her life at this point. And she's so scared that she writes a note describing who's in there, and what the situation is in the hopes that like she'll slide the window open, just throw it out into the street. Somebody will read it and be like, and tell the police. Oh, no. A guy does pick it up, but he doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I thought you were going to say like Alfonso got it. No. It blew into his window. <laughs> <laughs> He's just reading like, yeah, Alfonso. You mean Adolfo dickhead? Whatever. <laughs> yes, Al Alfonso Ribeiro is, <laughs> is leading this cult. They, <laughs> authorities show up. They're all doing the fucking Carlton. <laughs> It's not unusual. No es unusual. <laughs> <laughs> What's Spanish for unusual? Unusuale. Thank you. <laughs> a couple days later, police are called to that apartment because they hear arguing and gunshots. So the police show up and fucking Adolfo realizes, like, I'm not going to get out of this. So he hands a gun to his, his fucking um, his enforcer, El Doobie. That's rules. Yeah, it does. That <laughs> rules. So he's like, all right, El Doobie, I'm going to need you to kill me and his homeboy, Martin Quintana. He's Damn, right next to dude. him. He's like, yeah, you need to do this. What did Martin say about all this? Was he like, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm good. I can't see. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> El Doobie does as, is, as is, is instructed. And shortly thereafter, the authorities raid the apartment and they take in El Doobie and Sarah Aldretti. What uh, happened to El Doobie? Do you know his fate? Yeah, El Doobie ended up getting 30 years in prison for killing Adolfo Costanzo oh and Martin God. Quintana. They asked me to do it. Yeah. 
Damn, 30 years. Sounds 30? Like he needed a better lawyer. <laughs> but get this. The girl who threw the note out the window, Sarah Aldretti, she got 60 years for various murders. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, various murders? Mm-hmm. In, in, involved in the 16 or 15 yes. bodies? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the ranch. So what the hell did her notes say? Did we ever did we ever find her note? The note said that that the people they're looking for are in this apartment and I'm afraid they're gonna kill me. So she was asking for help with the note. <clears throat> that feels like it should get you like a little bit of time off. Yeah. You know? Yeah, six years is crazy. She's showing mm-hmm. remorse. Yeah, they got her ass though. Oh, get this though. This is pretty fucking weird. So uh remember our buddy Henry Lee Lucas? The guy that uh, asked for milkshakes in exchange for information on where bodies yeah, may be yeah. found. He drew a map. And I think the website is like, um, yeah, if you Google fucking Henry Lee Lucas map, it may be the first link that pops up. Because I think the website is henry-maps.com. But it, it, it gives you a map which pinpoints all the locations where he said all these unfound bodies were. And one of the locations that he gave on his map was... A place where he said people were doing satanic rituals and burying bodies here. And that happened to be right outside of Matamoros. How did he know that? I don't know. I don't know if it's just an insane guess or if he be, he was there or somehow became aware of it. That's crazy. But it is pretty wild that it's not far outside of the city. He and was he, Texas too, right? He was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's nuts. Whoa. Yeah, pretty wild. I'm going to know more about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you delve into that big time? The possibility of a connection? I didn't. It's hard because he's retarded. <laughs> and all the cold people are fucking dead or in jail. Yeah. So. What about that Eagles jacket guy? He's still around? I would like to find out more about him. Yeah. He might be the, the mm-hmm. golden ticket. He might be the golden ticket. Yeah. Yeah. So our pal Adolfo Costanzo didn't make it out of the apartment. And that was still 89? Yes. He didn't even make it. He was part of the 27 club. Whoa. He he's part of Kirk Cobain Whoa. right now. Yes, dude. Jimmy Man, Morrison he's butt fucking Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> doing a line off fucking Mama Cass's fat ass. Dude, could you imagine being gay in 27 in heaven? Wait, Mama <sighs> Cass wasn't. She was old, wasn't she? No, she was just fat. You're thinking Janice Joplin. You're thinking Janice Joplin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mama Cass lived a long life. Yeah, she didn't, right? I have no idea. She's mama's. She's the one who choked on the sandwich. That was that's like <laughs> that's the, the Austin Powers joke. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, that's his joke. I just you don't remember that? He, said, just, he said Mama Cass choked on a sandwich. Yeah, Mama I don't Cass know choked on a ham I, sandwich. I thought that was a true. I, I've taken that as true. I think it's based in truth. Are you researching this? And it was it was from Mamas and Papas, right? Yeah. And it wasn't Karen Carpenter. Or she was just in the Carpenters. Jesus's age. Oh, uh, so Mama Cass was 33. Well, so they can't be die? in heaven together. Never got to be Grandmama Cass. Was it what a sandwich? My mom Cass. <laughs> it was a sandwich. It was one of the most interesting One of the most interesting things about Mama Cass is like she was fat in a time where people typically weren't fat. Uh-huh. Like profoundly obese. Was she just a singer? A big fat lady, too. But did she? Uh, yeah, I'm not taking that away from her. I would never. Did she play an instrument in Mamas and the Papas? I don't know. I don't think she did. Okay. All right, we solved it. She just had a voice, man. Who's the Papa? Um, Papa Roach. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I couldn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't think of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he died in that. Died that day. Mm-hmm. And, and this is his legacy. Dude, 27. Yeah, he got a lot done. It's a hard 27, it's though. It's making me yeah. feel uh, under-accomplished for my age. <laughs> you, now, you call his followers disciples. Did he call them that? Is that what, like, is that what people in cults call themselves? No, I, I, I don't know that they were. They viewed themselves as a cult. I think they just wanted to be part of these rituals and just wanted to align themselves with somebody powerful, which is essentially what a cult fucking is. Right. But But, this was like more subsect of religion. Yeah. You're saying. Yeah. Like people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It had a very religious feel to it. But I mean, I guess, yeah, they all are kind of 
<laughs> yeah, hand in hand, fucking Heaven's Gate. It's like you got to think that to, I don't know. When I think of like Americans cult, American cults, I view those people as eventually having to know that like, oh, this is a cult, and it's uh, not just an area where it's just like, okay, we're in the desert, and these are people who are nice to me. So I should probably do things with them, which I can foresee as being the issue with these people. Yeah. Hey, you're nice to me, and I'm also into fucking boiling cats. Yeah. As opposed to the matching sneakers and gowns. Mm -hmm. and is this Kool-Aid a little bit off? <laughs> <laughs> is Kool-Aid just a little bit weird? <laughs> That's how I want to go, though, man. Get nice sneakers and a fucking sweet drink. <laughs> 60 of my closest friends. <laughs> Just imagine that dying with all your boys. That'd be so cool. I got poison some shit for us. <laughs> That's a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know when it, when we all get matching shoes to stop drinking whatever Mike gives us oh, here. Shit. Yeah, we got two out of three. Oh, you guys already have matching shoes. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's yeah. the other one? So no, so you gotta get you gotta get the matching shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get those, those bad boys. I get them for you. What size you guys? We had a whole conversation about how because of Mike, you just said this because Mike yeah. bought the shoes. The ad started showing up on my phone, but and I didn't so realize they were your shoes. That's because our phones were probably touching when we were butt fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Jake just unzipped the back of his pants, and I pulled my dick out of my oh, zipper. Man. That's what happens when you have Boost Mobile. It's, uh, um, yeah, but yeah, when Lou came in and then I showed up to the next episode and I saw your shoes, I was like, ah, such an idiot. <laughs> but you're allowed to uh, wear the same shoes as your boy. Mm -hmm. And we're allowed to call you a fucking biter. <laughs> <laughs> At, at home, I have a bunch of just notes taped to the wall, and I'm like trying to tell myself about a serial killer in the mirror. <laughs> Doing like a real Norman Bates thing with Mike at home. Take your phone out. I want to influence it. No. What are you gonna What are you gonna put in there? What is Jake gonna put in there? Jake, bring your phone over here, Jake. Put it in the middle. We want to talk Point about the it. the microphone over here. Find the microphone. You got it. Stupid fucking idiot gave me his phone. Used elderly diapers. Hey, Siri. <laughs> not so mine. <laughs> I'm gonna put mine away. No, don't hey. do that. Mine's around here, hey, too. Siri, not my Siri. <laughs> stinky. Stinky diapers. <laughs> old hairy nuts Stop. and diapers. Do they show me ads for old hairy nuts? Diapers? Yeah. You've been thinking about purchasing. <laughs> yeah. Hey Siri. <laughs> no, that's my phone. Fuck. Turn that bitch off. Yeah. <laughs> Jake Siri. <laughs> I think if you hold one of the buttons, it'll Siri, right? Hey Siri. Ooh. No. Siri off. Hey Siri. Siri off. No. No. Call my side, bitch. Download as many pictures of John Benet Ramsey as possible. <laughs> Give me my phone back. Until my memory is full. <laughs> ah, it's downloading. What do I do? Hey, Siri, show us the hottest pictures. <laughs> that was the dumbest thing I've ever Come done. On, you guys my phone. Good one. Thanks, brother. You set it up, baby. <laughs> ah, for yeah. a man going to jail. Yes, dude. <laughs> Oh, I want to thank Josie Reyes for these wonderful paintings. Oh, yeah. These are amazing. We got a gerbil in memoriam painting. Incredible. R.I.P. to all the gerbils that died in gay butts. <laughs> <laughs> and then Josie also painted this wonderful picture of John and I on my Dracula night. Look at that. That's mid-hiss, it looks like. It is, man. That's you, incredible. Uh, I was laughing, but on the inside, I was scared. <laughs> Oh, we missed you that night. For we missed you last week too, buddy. How, how have you been? I feel like I haven't seen you in forever, I'm Jake. I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, it's rehab stints in and out, uh, <laughs> but it's been good. I went to a sky zone. You went back, but I didn't the go scene in. Scene of the fucking. I did. Did you consider getting back into the foam pit for a split second? And then I saw the foam pit. And I'm like, there's still no fucking way. Did anybody recognize you? Any employees? <laughs> 
You see any photos of yourself around the office? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lady took out her phone. She had nine one dialed. <laughs> no, literally though, we walked up the steps and my kid was like, "Dad, you can't go up there." Oh, yeah. He ref- whoa. He refers to it as the place I got stuck. <laughs> he goes, "Dad, can we go to the place where you got stuck?" And I'm like, "Can you not, dude?" Have you not been back since? That was the first time. And oh. your son has not been back either. No, he was punished for it. <laughs> <laughs> So that was wild. Grounded uh, for six months. Yeah. So that's where I've been. <laughs> just standing at the edge of the foam pit, just having a real heart of the ocean moment with my dignity. <laughs> Is there anything? Oh, I know how you could enjoy the foam pit. You can get one of those big um, like beach ball things that you get inside of. So that way you'll be on top of the foam. Like a, like a hamster wheel? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can get shoved up your favorite gay guy's ass. <laughs> Yeah. Who's your favorite gay guy, Jake? Oh, man. I got a whole list at home. I'll bring him the book next time, and I'll, I'll uh, pick one at random. We'll sh- shove you up all their asses. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Cut off a piece of me. And yeah. Just, yeah. It could oh. be like a Flaming Lips concert. You know what I mean? Oh, man. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. They should have those there anyway. The big balls. <laughs> what can you, what will you do at uh, Sky Zone now? I bounced. Do they have basketball hoops there? They do. oh fuck, dude! I, you dunk? I dunked on the little one, and I just I didn't think I could jump that high. Damn! Uh, but boy, got hype. Shaquille O'Neal palm. <laughs> dude, I I I dunked it, and and I jumped so high that when I grabbed the rim, I like flipped and like landed on my neck. I was like, oh, all right, Jesus! I'm just Christ. gonna. I think I'm just going to chill over here. Watch you jump, pal. That'd be fun to look up to find out like how many paralyzations happen at Sky Zone oh, each yeah. year. You have to sign a waiver, man, when you walk in. <laughs> man, yeah, I'm sure that doesn't prevent people from landing on their neck, though. Oh, no, yeah. that doesn't. It's not like an invisibility spell. Jake, if you got carted off, would you give the thumbs up like an NFL player? <laughs> I got to yeah. do that once. Oh, what'd you get hurt doing? Uh, I got punched in the face down a set of stairs for asking for a cigarette at the wrong party. <gasps> And then ambulance came. Apparently, I was just at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding from the head for a while, unconscious. And then they got me in the gurney, and like this entire apartment complex was there watching me get carted out. Mm-hmm. And I gave him the thumbs up, and everybody cheered. Oh, that's so, sweet of them. Yeah. <laughs> Except it wasn't sports; it was alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> but I won. <laughs> was that the night you got the uh, catheter put in? <sighs> Which one? Yeah, might have been talking about the time when my body had to hold my penis mm-hmm. because I was so nasty to the fat nurses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could have been that night. Could have been another night. Who's to say? I spent a lot of time in the hospital in college. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I don't mind. I was too violent um, and blacked out for the nurses to feel comfortable around my alcohol penis what were you saying were you like you're like a six (laughs) (laughs) i don't know but the constable had to handcuff me to the bed you said the constable yeah the hotel or the 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 hotel constable (laughs) i guess it was a concierge (laughs) and yeah i guess it was a la quinta (laughs) yeah hospitals have like a constable that's what they call them is that what they're called really yeah that's something from like a sherlock holmes episode Mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm Sherlock and Watson's is uh, the hospital I went to. <laughs> They're also my insurance provider. <laughs> Mike, you uh, you had a good time this week. Oh, brother, I was balling out. I went to uh, Harry Styles. Yeah, you're in the middle of a fucking a, a concert series. You know, oh, tour. man. Yeah. I, I feel rejuvenated these past couple of weeks. You're about to see Ramstein. Corn, Ramstein. Ram, Ram, Ramstein, right? I have no idea. I don't. I don't I think know. It's, actually, I think you brought tickets to Ramstein. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Corn Rams Ramstein, fucking Harry Styles. I'm really getting around. That's, yeah, that's uh, that's not a three. Yeah. combo. Yeah, you wouldn't get that in the Live Nation discount pack. <laughs> Did you like Harry Styles? I love Harry. You've seen Styles. him before. Yeah, I've seen him twice before. This is my third time. Which was the best time you've seen him? This time. I was close to him. You got close. I did. Yeah, yeah. I saw you posted some pictures. You were uh, like up close. I could damn near smell him, Jake. So this, okay. Remember a while ago we talked about concerts, and you said how when you go to concerts you like to turn around and face the crowd. Oh, I didn't yeah. do it for this one. 
This would have been one concert I would have loved to yeah, have no. gone to and done that just to see you screaming. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Harry! <laughs> I, dude, that would have been incredible to see. I did not do this, do that because uh, this was my first time being in, in so close to the stage for Harry. Yeah. Whereas, like, I have no qualms about doing that for Deftones because I've seen him a bunch of times and, yeah. you know, Harry's a much more beautiful man than Chino. Did you like fawn over Harry? No. No. What are the fans called? I don't know. Harry nuts. Nuts, nuts sacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give it up for Harry's nut sacks. <laughs> um, is he British? He is. Does he sound British? He does. He he he, he doesn't hide it. No. <laughs> Hello. Hello, it go be here. <laughs> Did you like One Direction? I did not, but I have. I do like a couple of their songs now because they play some One Direction stuff before the show. Nice, and I like like a few of their jams. Yeah, they had a couple bangers. I like uh, "That's What Makes You Beautiful" and "Best Song Ever." Those are my two favorites. Good for you. The story of my life is cute too. Bro, all right, he's describing songs as cute now. The night changes. That's a nice one. All right, he won't stop singing One Direction <laughs> songs. You know oh, what? my God. He's wearing a fucking sequin dress. <laughs> Where did he get a cocktail dress from? I feel like I told you this story before. You know, I performed with One Direction. Oh, yeah? Where uh, was that? Remind me. Yes. 2012. Epstein Island? Epstein Island. Close. The Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I, was, I work as a PA on the Kids' Choice Awards. You said I performed with them. Yes. So, during that What Makes You Beautiful, it was our first time. I think it was our... American TV debut mm -hmm. on the Kids Choice Awards. And uh during the like there's a bridge of the song and then they go back into the chorus. When they go back into the chorus, it was my job along with 12, 12 other PAs to throw these, I'm not even kidding, giant balls the size of this room, like a big bouncy ball. It was like super thin to throw it out into the crowd and then just go chase it down. So they couldn't pop it and leave with it? So just like, no, it was just like so that they didn't hit the performers on stage. Yeah. So it says, once you throw your giant ball the size, like this like 10 by 10 ball, you, you throw it out at that part, and then you just follow it, go grab it as it gets to the front, and then just take it to the wings. I think Harry hated you doing that because at his shows, people throw shit at him the whole time. What? Do they really? Bottles and he, shit? No, it's mostly it's like toys and teddy bears and hats. But like the whole fucking concert, people are throwing shit at him. Are you think that's a good serious? idea? Like, it's not a good idea. Like, I eventually know. somebody's going to throw something fucked up that's going to fucking hurt him. Yeah. How do you not look at somebody throwing him? Like, why would you do that? You're an asshole. I don't know why they allow it, but they do, and everybody has a good time. I think it's like they want to give him a gift mm -hmm. too. But I mean, every single thing they throw is getting thrown in the garbage. Yeah, but they're hoping that he picks up. Oh. <laughs> Mike threw, threw this fake severed head of himself <laughs> holding a rose. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love you. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's what I'm, I think that's what the hope is that he sees mm -hmm. it and goes, oh, my God. Thank you, uh, Tiffany. And then just like calls him up on stage and marries them. <laughs> that's what I think they want. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we all want. <laughs> <laughs> it's why I throw shit at Harry Styles. Um <laughs> Was this part of your Conan internship? Was this this was after, yeah. Or like, yeah, during, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Are you jealous that he was uh, no. performing with Harry? No. You're I'm, not the jealous type. I get what no. I want. I was, like, my, my daughter loves him more than anything. So I go in part because I want to hang out with her, but also I like him a lot. Would you try to pawn off your daughter for marriage to Harry Styles? No. If you made, oh, wait. I'm <laughs> Jake, what the no, fuck I'm is not, wrong with you? Listen. What if it resulted in a lifetime's worth of Harry Styles concert tickets? No, I'm good, man. All right. I got fucking Spotify. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the guy, but I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Harry, Harry, my daughter. <laughs> what yeah. was his wildest stage outfit? Does he switch outfits? Mm, he does not, but... Really? Yeah, he's not Elton John. No, he doesn't change outfits, but I know when he did... The show that we went to last year, we went on Halloween, which was Harry Ween. Hmm. And I think he came out dressed like a clown. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he wearing a dress uh, at your concert? No. Okay. No, it's kind of a one piece. 
stripe deal. Do you like him wearing dresses? Hey, whatever, whatever do you makes like his you happy. Fluid sexuality. I do, man. I like people being themselves. Yeah. So whatever you are, be that, and and I'll go see you. It's beautiful, Mike. Thank you. That's what makes me beautiful. That is what makes you beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful because I just heard you yelling at a gas beautiful. station attendant for having pronouns that you didn't agree with. <laughs> I just got a text from the CIA. They're outside my house. <laughs> good. Yeah, I had a, I had a nice week, man. I, I've had a good run lately. I, I feel like, brother, I was really in the shitter fucking recently, mental health wise. But sucks. Yeah. I turned a corner and, uh, dude, uh, part of it was I'm, I'm really enjoying writing my new book. Yeah. Nice. Um. Oh yeah. Do people know? Oh, you've been talking about it. Right? I, I think I mentioned it on here, but I believe my new book is going to be available for purchase in November, and I'm going to start a pre-sale like a month before it's ready, and I'm going to have a special deal for people. But uh, yeah, I'm running a book called On Perks about my two-year run addicted to prescription painkillers, as documented by my Facebook statuses. <laughs> <laughs> Which one hilarious, right? Very, very funny. The fact that you can look back on that and not just hit delete on the memory <laughs> and well, you're embracing this embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I mean, that's probably, you know, the cause of your mental health turn. You're going, going through some back dark and, shit yeah, yeah. day by day to write this book. Dude, honestly, like I printed out close to like 600 statuses and like the vast majority of them are very upbeat. Yeah, yeah. You always had a positive... I did, man. Uh, ...mental attitude. And I feel like I went way overboard with being positive when I was on Perks. Like, I was volunteering to help everybody move. Did you ever? I did. Really? Yep. Who took you up on that? What piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> took you up on that? saw a fucking <laughs> drug -ed, a pill -ed addict <laughs> fucking yeah. typing at three in the morning <laughs> about how happy he is and if he could do anything for anybody. How many people did you help move? Uh, I think two uh, most of the time when i would say if i can do anything for anybody let me know people would just ask me to promote whatever they were doing uh -huh. which that's nice it's a it is nice but like i don't want to like i quickly realized i don't want to do that because a lot of times people were promoting absolute dog shit yeah. and i like promoting other people's stuff but if you were jake had something you to want promote, the product yeah. to be yeah to be good like yeah. i want to be able to like stand behind it right yeah but I stopped doing that just because people were asking you me to share every piece of dog shit. It's like the boy who cried wolf. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. It is. The boy who cried dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I stepped in dog. You step in dog shit every fucking day. <laughs> All right. What happened to my new fucking rug? <laughs> but I'm having a blast writing it. And like I said, uh, I believe it's going to be for sale at the beginning of November. And I'm going to have a pre sale like a month prior to that. And for the pre sale, I'm go I think I'm going to bundle like the the print copy, the ebook, and the audio book, which you two have so kindly agreed to help narrate. I'm going to put all those together for one price and a perk thirty. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it'd be like a golden ticket, like Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's, it's Pilly Wonka's golden ticket. I'm going to put a perk thirty in five random packages. Now, when you do the perk thirty, will it be like the pages cut out with a pill bottle inside, or just a single perk? Yeah. The book is unreadable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then uh, I'm very excited for the audiobook version as well because um, all my funny buddies are doing it with me, and uh, yeah, I haven't told you what you're going to be reading yet, but you're going to regret it. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> Now, Mike, um, I'm not sure how much you want to uh, divulge here, but uh, what is the format? Are you are you looking back on these statuses and commenting? Yes. And, and putting yourself back in those yeah. uh, mindset and uh, saying, like, this is what I was feeling at the time. Yes. Yeah. And so it's a present day analysis of whatever that given Eight time period status was. Yeah. yeah. And some of them I still agree with. Others I don't. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few that you can still stand behind. Yes, like uh, there's one about wishing my wife and I had separate rooms, and I still <laughs> stand. <laughs> would you settle for bunk beds? I would, because it's just about I, I need my own space sometimes, and like part of it is too. My wife loves to like she's still looking at fucking social media when I'm trying to go to sleep. I almost always fall asleep first. Yeah, and it gets annoying seeing that glow through my own eyelids Damn. even even first. if she's on the lowest um glow that bitch not isn't low glowing <laughs> <laughs> bro if i'm not low glowing my bitch wake up 
And she told me to glow low. That's crazy. You fall asleep first? Yeah. I come first too, Jake. Well, I, yeah. I mean, we all come first. Um, man, I can't even tell you the last time I fell asleep before my wife. I don't know. If, I don't think it's ever happened in my life. Yeah, I think she. Yeah, I think she tried to murder me. Yeah. That's. What... Oh, you've been setting your alarm for twelve fifteen. How's that going? Not great. <laughs> you sleeping through it? Oh yeah. Well, I wake up and I throw my phone out the window, and then I continue to sleep. But yeah. I blame last night on uh, nearly overdosing on an edible. I was high as fuck when I woke up. How do you overdose on an edible? I mean, you just feel groggy, right? Yeah, the next day. But if you take too much, but you're like, like you're like the you're like, like vibrating. A I know, but like edibles, like the one thing where it's like Michael Phelps pulling a muscle swimming. <clears throat> Thank you. That's a that's a compliment. Thank you. Um, to that point, one of my own perk statuses revolves around asking anybody if they want a complimentary meet and greet pass to meet Michael Phelps. Did you have a complimentary meet? I bought it for the purpose of giving it away. That's how high I was. Mike. Jesus. Dude, it was like, um, I forget how I even got it, but it was like, it was, it was like 300 bucks for a fucking meet and greet with Olympic gold medalist, Michael Phelps. And I was like, oh, this would be a good gift for somebody. Nobody wanted it. Somebody. And then. Another status, which I'm sure landed me on a watch list, was oh, no. does anybody know any child swimmers? If so, inbox me. I have a proposal. <laughs> a proposal? Because my thinking Jesus, was Mike. because I a think proposal? <laughs> I think I think girls uh um uh <laughs> swimwear <laughs> is just <laughs> now the the rational a proposal and logical way to put that would be, hey, I bought this meet and greet pass to meet Michael Phelps. I'm not going to use it. I think a kid who is in the swimming would probably appreciate this. And if you want it, let me know. God, that I think that's a much better way I of have saying a proposal. that. But Jake, it was it was almost verbatim. Uh, does anybody know any child swimmers? If so, inbox me. <laughs> did you, when you hit send, did you hear a knock at your door? <laughs> <laughs> It was Scuba Steve here to arrest you. <laughs> I can't believe that you were addicted to pills and you were still like, in your mind, $300 wasn't so for more pills. Yeah. I got to that point. I would, By yeah. my second year on pills, like That's I was point. going through all my pills and my deal was I would do this. So I would keep a certain amount and then... So I wouldn't take all of the pills because I would get between 120 and 180 a month. What I would do is I would keep a certain amount and then I would sell the rest. And then I would inevitably, inevitably run out of the ones that I kept for myself. And then I started buying pills for myself. And eventually I just started keeping more and more pills. And then I kept all of them and then I'd have pills. to buy more. Yeah. yeah. You became yeah. a CBS. So mm -hmm. you never had to pay top dollar for, for it. Eventually I did. Yeah. Okay. That's and that's like a buck a milligram, right? Yeah, dude, it was. That's fucking mm. insane. And at the time, man, I, I was I was making really good money because I was working two jobs, and I worked six days a week. So if I wasn't in the pills, I would have had great money. Yeah. However, like once I was fucking whacked by the second year, it was just almost every spare dollar I had was going to buy more pills. Were you whacked at work? Yeah. Doing what? Shaving pubes. Uh, we're uh, working in education. <laughs> Shaving a line in the pubes. <laughs> yeah. You got to figure most public educators are a little fucked up on the job. Yeah, it it did make things bearable. Because <laughs> every day, like like my job was to like mediate conflicts between like students and teachers. Confiscate pills was yeah. my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys got any fucking, if they're fucking, you don't want to run a risk of just taking old expired pills. <laughs> Why is the hall monitor wearing a whistle and a tracksuit? <laughs> Damn, so you just, you had to, a teacher and a student would get in a fight and you had to be like, yo, can you all just chill for real? Yeah, dude. Damn. And which I mean is you know, indirectly, you know, that's a cool resource for a school to have is a pill head mediator. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. what would happen was like um, a lot of these kids were just prone to getting in trouble because like they just, you know, came from tough situations. So they didn't have the skills to like appropriately deal with like anger or frustration. Yeah. So they would get in trouble so often that the school could only suspend them so often and, and punish them mm -hmm. so often. 
so to to lessen the likelihood of them coming up for something that's suspension worthy you know there was me and one other guy who had the same job as i would and anytime there was a kid teacher beef we'd have to get in the middle of it. and most times it was fine like yeah you know kids just need a fucking break sometimes how many times did you side with the student versus the teacher um honestly it was pretty fairly split like i i would really? not i would not hesitate to side with a kid because there was one time where a substitute teacher called two of the kids in my program retards yowzer which was which is fucking insane yeah, so i'm guessing he didn't get hired full time dude it, it's almost he's impossible the principal now <laughs> I, well, yeah he's still Super employed intended. well when i was there last he was still employed which was 2014 as a career sub or yeah he was the building sub okay so wherever oh, oh, oh. he's there yeah. every day so he's comfortable fills in wherever he right. needs to go but um yeah I, thanks, dude yeah that's terrible yeah that was like the extreme so i had a fucking scream at him but most times it was just simple shit like kids coming in late or or just not doing work and it was a lot of times where i'd just be like all right you know just becoming aware that a kid was like just coming to class late on a regular basis just finding out where they were and just meeting them outside of that class and making sure they got to their class before well, without making any pit stops it was at your school jake what's that it was at your school oh yeah yeah but was yeah. that a catholic school no no it was where i would have went if uh had i not gone to catholic jake lived in that neighborhood gotcha yeah. when did you graduate jake Oh five. All right, I got there in oh seven. Okay. So, I just miss you at the school you didn't go to. Could you imagine? I'm like, Mr. Mike, thanks for having me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been the one to have a teacher stop calling you a retard every single day. Aww. Yeah. If only you were there for my upbringing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for these pa pa passes to be Michael Phelps. <laughs> 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 yeah that was a fun job though i a lot of those kids are great there's so many funny things like when every now and again like something that the kids did like that were especially funny or fun will pop into my mind and it just makes me happy all over again there was one time this this little fucking hurricane of a person named ayana which is so fucking bad and she was like four feet tall and it was her birthday she brought in like like 300 munchkins and in this class there were maybe like five kids and I was like, Ayana, you th really think we need that many munchkins for this class? She's like, shit, when I break bread, I'll break bread. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fuck. That's smarter than anything I've ever said in my whole life. That's awesome. <laughs> and she was roasting uh, my buddy, uh, Riley. Okay. Uh, who was a teacher there who also did comedy. He's a very funny guy. And uh, he was a portly gentleman. And he was yelling at her about something one day. <laughs> And she's like, uh, she's like, you need to breastfeed with them titties. She's like, if a baby breastfed off them titties, he grope like a or, or fucking burp like a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, she had jokes, man. Good for her. Yeah. Happy birthday in heaven, Ayana. Yeah, she, she definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Y'all ever been fucked up at work? Um, I did some mushrooms and then went in to make pizza one day. Ooh, I bet that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And then one time I did salvia, and that was like a week of not feeling right. <laughs> I couldn't make eye contact with my coworkers for like oh my gosh, five yeah. days. I must have gone in somewhere after a couple beers at least, but never like blackout drunk. Mm -hmm. You ever go... Drunk in I got really drunk uh, when I worked at the Healthplex, which was now the Delaware County YMCA. It's just like this really nice facility. I worked there. I was uh, a locker room boy. I would pick up towels, but uh, I played in a basketball league there. And uh, I think it was a Monday night league, and I was getting hammered all Monday. I was, was a bunch of my boys brought over Long Island iced tea that comes already in the bottle, you know. Whoa. And I didn't know how hard hitting it was because yeah. I had never had Long Island iced tea, and I was drinking that all day. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got a game tonight. So I went and played my game, and I scored four points. Was that a career high? At the time, yeah. Damn. Oh, it's high to career high because I had- Better when you're drunk. I had four in a child league as a child. 
Um, so that tied my career high. That's an important distinction. <laughs> but I was so drunk <laughs> there that um, my buddy who was managing, thankfully he was like a friend. Yeah. He pulled me aside. He's like, he's like, dude, he's like, please don't do this again. Because yeah. like you're noticeably fucked up. Okay. But you weren't yeah. on the clock. I wasn't on the clock, yeah. but I was at work at fucked work. up. Yeah. I love how you had to specify that you were not, you were also a child. <laughs> like, hey, if, do I know any children basketball players? I have a proposition for you. <laughs> I proved what I had to prove. I only played one game. Now, my thing was I made my mom s- sign me up for the league because when I played in fifth and sixth grade in grade school, I never scored. I was the only fucking kid who didn't score. And there was, I think it was my sixth grade year where I was like, all right, this is the last game. I have to score. Was the whole team like, get it to Mike. He needs no. to score. No. no. Oh, it, was, it was a blowout. They let Mike in for the last <laughs> minute. They were, me, Everyone's cheering. The other team's handing you the ball. <laughs> me and this other kid named Alvin were the only two kids who hadn't scored yet that year. So Alvin got in first and he got fouled and, he's, and he made a foul shot. So he's on the board. Safe. I got in the game. And I just didn't score. Did so, you shoot? I don't remember if I shot or not. No I know I didn't score for can't sure. Score if you don't shoot, Mike. Yeah, that's true, Jake. So I, I, it always stuck with me that I never scored a basket. So when I was like maybe a couple years older, I made my mom sign me up for a local rec league, the 69th Street Athletic Association. Oof. And she signed me up in my first game. I scored four points without my fucking glasses on. Damn. Damn. And I I didn't play any more games. I never went back. I proved what I had to prove. You, you, that's, that's the day you lost the nickname Horace Kant. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we went to one game. Your mom spent fucking $45 yeah. to sign you up for that league. She didn't give yeah. a fuck. Went she downtown. <laughs> <laughs> He's heating up. More pizza rolls. <laughs> She yeah she she didn't want to drive me there anyway so she got to sit, <laughs> stay home and smoke cigarettes so oh that's all awesome. yeah she's like you got it out of the system you're like yeah were you a, a a portly gentleman back then I was my mom would never fucking uh, buy me the appropriate size pants either too big too small she oh. was convinced that I was the size that I was and I was a husky boy I I needed huskies so elastic waist just squeezing your fucking dude guts I was just talking about this with uh, Butterly McKeever because um. We are talking about getting boners when you first started getting them and how fucking intense they are. Yeah. I remember when I first started getting boners, my, my school pants were so fucking tight that like my boner was like uh, when Han Solo gets frozen in carbonite. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was so fucking See painful. The veins through Dude. the fucking. Yeah. It was like if I was looking at it as a boner aficionado, I'd be like, wow, look at that thing. Did, uh-huh. you, did you invent skinny jeans? I might have. Well, they weren't exactly skinny jeans because they flared out at the bottom. Yeah, it was brutal, man. Dude, I might whip your ass now for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, one of my aunts got me for my birthday one year a pair of like, uh, got me a Gap outfit, which was super fucking baggy, and I wore it every fucking day. Did they over, like, oversize it on purpose? Did they get you like a triple XL because that's what they thought you were? Or no, just- I, I got to pick it this time. Okay. You so I just picked size. as big as possible because yeah. I just wanted Whatever to feel comfortable. Whatever Fred Durst once. is wearing. Yeah. <laughs> was that the beginning of a phase? You go back uh, for a few years after that? Yeah. You know, that might have been the start of my wigger phase. Start getting a specific kind of haircut. I wore that. And uh, I would, dude, I would, I would douse myself in preferred stock cologne. Would you wear the, that Rhino brand? What was that Rhino brand? Echo Unlimited. Echo, yeah. uh, no, I never got Echo. I was a no? Tommy Hilfiger guy. I was an Echo guy. And who has it? Is it Action Bronson has the line? He's like, I heard your bitch still wears Echo. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it hurts my heart every time I hear it, dude. Yeah, I only wear Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein. For real? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Calvin isn't, I don't think, would be considered one of the premium wigger brands, but Tommy, obviously. Mm-hmm. I had one Tommy Hilfiger shirt. With Everything logo. else was from Caldor. Big logo or. Chess logo. Chess logo. It was the embroidery. Oh, oh, no. Sorry. No, maybe it was the big logo. It was like all the way across. Yeah, it was the big logo. This yeah. motherfucker's wearing salami heel figure. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girlfriend try to steal my shirt. It was a real, I got it for Christmas. That's what they do, man. Dude, legit. And it was early, too, because it was like sixth grade. So I'm there in my double XL Tommy Hill figure shirt. We played seven minutes in heaven right at her birthday party. We go in the closet. She's like, hey, we're not doing anything. 
Uh, I'm like Jake. All right. She's like, hey, also lose his shirt, fatso. <laughs> <laughs> you got any smokes in that bag? <laughs> I know you guys got chips. Dude. <laughs> so after the party, she she said something about like, yeah, she wanted the shirt. I think, like, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Oh. I give her the shirt. They're so nice. Walking around with just my fat nipples out. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I had I had an Echo shirt underneath. No. Um, so I probably had like a WrestleMania shirt underneath. <laughs> and I go home and like a day or two later, she has her friend call me and break up with me. <gasps> and I was like, she has my shirt. I'm like, yeah, sorry. I don't know. You guys are just, she doesn't want to date you anymore. And Did it's you over. have to explain to your parents where the shirt went? No. I sent my sister over. Uh, to go the get the shirt. Good move. You got it back. Yeah, I got it back. That's the move, give man. Good for you. Shirt. Yeah. So. Either give me <laughs> the shirt or give my brother ass. <laughs> give him cheeks or <laughs> give me the shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I had any Tommy. That's some nautica stuff. Hmm. But I was full on for a couple years. I'm talking. Echo. Fucking woo wear. Mm. Yeah, I Whoa. had some woo wear stuff. John Blaze. I didn't have any of that. Um, whatever. Never Fubu. I knew. Mm-hmm. I knew better. What else? Never South Pole. I could always. That just always seemed like a fucking. That's like poor wigger. Too big. Over yeah, down on your luck. Yeah. like permanently waiting for bus stops. Fucking Damn, U.S. Polo cool. Association. Mm, yeah. Um, might have had a Pelly Pell shirt at one point. Mm. Uh, but yeah, there was Al Sporting Goods in Wilmington and Flavor. That's where I would go to get my fucking wigger drip. I would go to either Macy's or City Blue. City Blue. I'm sorry. Yeah, not Macy's. Uh, Strawbridge. Strawbridge oh, yeah, and Clothier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I would get polo shit when I, I that was probably pre wigger. Mm. Gateway. Mm. Polo was a gateway to wigger clothes. <laughs> Damn. Might have to get back into that phase. I'm slowly. I mean, I'm wearing fucking Nike more up tempos right now. I'm like slowly getting there. Yeah. Clothes are getting a little bit bigger. It's probably because I'm getting a little bit bigger, but (laughs) skinny jeans are out. Yeah. You keep asking me for my clothes. It's very uncomfortable. (laughs) Just tell me what size you are so I can (laughs) try it on. You wouldn't be able to find it. Any of the ladies on the swinger cruise ask you for any clothes, Jake? Uh, no, nobody asked me. You know, I would say I did forgive the late, the girl who took my shirt. I, a year later, my friend started dating her, and I'd go over there with him while he was hooking up with her. How was that? And I would just go in the basement and play Grateful Dead with her dad. Oh, and his, Jesus Christ. And, and we, your boys upstairs fucking his daughter. Yeah, yeah. And we'd just be singing Fire in the Mountain for two hours, <laughs> and it wasn't good. It was... <laughs> He was like missing his string on his guitar and he just wanted to be like, fire! <laughs> was he? <laughs> Little old lady got to be last night. Was the uh, guy baked? Did you ever blaze yes. together? Oh, he was 100% baked all the time. That rules. And, and completely drunk. Really? And, and I would just hang out with him all the time. That kind of guy. Can't really and, play uh, guitar either. And this guy <laughs> sounds a lot like me. Yeah. Was that tough for you? No, no. I, I was like, this rules. I'm getting to play guitar and i was like the best one there so it was like a nice little confidence boost me playing i'd be like bang, 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 and i'm like yeah and i was like yeah all right i'm i'm He's there john mayer picturing <laughs> yeah. stoned randy marsh oh dude I don't, who's randy marsh <laughs> it was that incredible dude if he had asked you to do seven minutes in heaven would you have done it with him <laughs> <laughs> no no, we had 45 minutes in heaven playing Fire in the Mountain. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, damn, y'all. So I think we're going to be all right with this cartel <gasps> business. Yeah, this is this is not nearly as um, cartel affiliated as I uh, feared. When Loosely you said it. cartel affiliated. Yeah. So I think we're good. And, you know, those guys know we're just we're just teasing. I'm more scared of the, the, the voodoo aspect than I am. We did say a voodoo prayer. True. For you money and this. pussy, yeah, yeah. My private area still burns. Yeah. Wait, did you ask for my dick to be invisible? Because where the fuck did that thing go? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I swear, <laughs> baby, it was just here. I swear, I just pissed. 
<laughs> oh, no. Balls are filled with piss again. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just squeeze this thing out. <laughs> it's sitting on my ball <laughs> shelf. <laughs> Yeah, let me voodoo your dick back. <laughs> all right, boys. Anything you want to add before we go? I think you got it all out. <laughs> yeah. We well, we got to get all. his dick out still. <laughs> you, we got to put your yeah. dick in the burn unit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we'll get you a black skin graft. Can you give me a dick sling? <laughs> I had to wear it around my neck. <laughs> Can I sneak in on your insurance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jake, do you think like if we started putting burn cream on there, you couldn't resist the urge to just jack off with it? Oh, man. We can try it. Is it a gel or a cream? I don't know. I've never been burned severely. Somebody has to rub it on. I can't mm -hmm. reach it. So I'll squirt it on you. With my ass. <laughs> <laughs> now are you are you filling your ass full of the cream and we'll then squirting out. it? Yeah. Or are you putting the tube in your Take ass? Take it easy, Perber. <laughs> I'll show you. And the nurses show up and be like, it's okay. I'm a squirter. <laughs> I'll have the constable handcuff you to your yeah. own bed. <laughs> and now for the catheter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I bet you I'd be good. It's probably just like putting on a fucking uh, a weed pen. Is this no, what your penis good. looks like? <laughs> Close. Is this what your penis looks like? Uh, no, it's the lighter one. Just the <laughs> translucent one. You're talking about size or color? Both. <laughs> all right, <laughs> right y'all all right everybody thank you for joining us tonight uh if you join us on patreon thank you for becoming a patron if you're not a patron yet go to patreon.com slash little stinkers that's l-i-l-s-t-i-n-k-e-r-s -E you get early access to every episode you get all the full episodes you get all the fucking guest episodes you get episodes where jake's dick isn't burned <laughs> Uh, you get live AMAs, all the other fucking weird shit we do. Just come join us on the Patreon if you're not already. Four bucks a month or 40 bucks a year. Jake, let him tickle you. What's that? Let him tickle you a little bit. No. I'm trying to break his glasses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's right to defend himself. <laughs> all right. Either way, thank you for joining us. We love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.